Genesis chapter 2. Go down to verse 5 if you're there. Can you say amen? amen? The word of the Lord says this. When no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground, and a mist was going up from the land, and was watering the whole face of the ground, then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. Verse number seven is the one I kind of want to focus on today. I want you to highlight it, underline it, write it down. Let's look at what that says one more time. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the what? From the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. Today as we start this four-part series, the Glory Days, what does it mean? What does it mean in our life? What is the Spirit of God trying to do in our community, in our gatherings? What I believe, what I'm sensing from God uh, today, I want to start with Genesis chapter 2, especially verse 7. If you're taking notes, I want to talk to you from this title. Glory in the dirt. Glory in the dirt. Why don't you turn to three, four people around you and tell them there's glory in the dirt. There's glory in the dirt. Let's pray, and then we'll talk about this for the next 28 minutes or so, and then we'll worship Jesus one more time, then go have an amazing Sunday as we see the dolphins beat the bills tonight. I'm saying that by faith, but help me, Lord. <laughs> My faith is weak. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you today. We made it to 2024. We look back at your faithfulness in 2023. There was hard times. We were pressed down. We were shaken, but not destroyed. God, we walked through some valleys, but we made it because of your goodness. And today we are in your house, in your presence, with your people. And for that alone, we say thank you. For that alone, we praise you because you are faithful, you are good, and you are kind. And so at the start of a brand new year, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to all of us across every service, every person tuned in, every person driving into the property today, wherever people are connected. We pray, Spirit of God, that you would open up our eyes to see your goodness and your love. We thank you and we praise you. And all of Calvary Church says, Amen. come on, all of Calvary Church says, Amen. can you make some noise for Jesus one more time? Come on. Recently, I've become somewhat of a builder because I have a daughter now. She, she just turned a year old, and so I am now Bob the Builder at home. I have to build everything from bikes to wagons to kitchen table sets uh, to little desk where she already is starting to color. It is absolutely beautiful and awesome. I'm enjoying every single second of seeing it, not building it. But I am a builder. Diana uh, is now a chef, and she is one mean cook. She can cook. I want to shout out my wife. I mean, just women, you are strong. You are brave. You are champions. And I think our world needs to celebrate you more. I've seen my wife become superwoman. It always has, but just went another level. And uh, she's looking for the best ingredients, grade A, organic, uh, everything. And she's making all kind of food for me and Ari. I, that's right. I get glory, too, out of what she cooks. And uh, it's been awesome. I really have been enjoying it. But I started thinking, we look for the best. We look for the best because this is our daughter in whom we are well pleased. And... I was building a little table for her the other day. <laughs> I was building a little table for her the other day, and, and I wanted to make sure 
Like I'm looking, I'm like, do they make this out of strong material? Are the legs sturdy? She's going to sit in this little chair. It better hold her up. You know, and I'm now checking what kind of materials I'm working with. I didn't care before, but now I care. And I'm into material and ingredients, where they come from, where they've been. If you're going to build something, you are going to look for the best material possible. If we're going to cook something, Anna's going to look for the best ingredients there is. It's interesting because as we go to Genesis chapter 2, and God went to make man, he didn't go to the best material he had. Just let's think about this for a moment. He could have gone to the bark of a tree and used the wood that carpenters use to make furniture. It's what we sit in, it's what we have, it's what we build with. I think wood would have been a better option than dirt. <laughs> He could have gone to the mountains of Italy and found marble. Imagine the neighbor next to you made out of marble. <laughs> Some of you think you're made out of marble, but you're not. Um, but he could have chiseled us to perfection, and that might have been better than dirt. He could have gone to a harvest field and gotten cotton. Some of us are wearing cotton today, or it just feels good. I mean, you just would have been a bundle of joy if you were made out of cotton. Just think about all the materials that were uh, accessible to God. He could have made us out of some of the metals and some of the things that are found on the earth. But yet he went down to the ground. He went down to the ground and he made you and I from the dust of the earth. He made us from dirt. Tell somebody... You're made out of dirt. <laughs> he made us from dirt. And I just think it's interesting. Now, I'm not saying dirt is, is necessarily bad. It's not all bad. It's good. Dirt is used in a whole lot of ways, right? It's used in agriculture. It's used in farming. It is used for engineering and mining. You can get a whole lot of good from dirt. I've been to the jungles of Uganda, and I saw how families, that's all they had, and they built some shacks out of dirt. You can do a whole lot with dirt. I'm not saying it is all bad, but dirt in itself, it's a humble substance. There's something humbling about being made from dirt. It is a fragile material. It is not strong in and of itself. It is fragile and weak. And I think God, it is curious and interesting that he made us from the dirt because that makes us people who are dependent on him, not ourselves. We are dependent on God for every single breath we take. We are, we are not operating in independence because we are made from the dust of the ground. You can't make yourself live. You can't make yourself breathe. Even if you tried, you couldn't. Every breath you take, is dependent on God giving you the very next air that you take into your lungs. And so it makes us dependent beings, not independent beings. Every fiber of our being depends on God. Every single fiber that makes up the human anatomy is dependent on God for life. Every cell, Every molecule, every atom, every vessel, every artery, down to the neutron and the proton and the Jimmy Neutron, everything down to the electron, everything is dependent on God. You cannot survive by yourself. If God were to say no more breath, you would be extinguished in this very moment. So all of our makeup is giving God praise. Everything that makes us up is waiting on God, is waiting on his glory to take in some breath all that has breath praise the Lord that's why the Bible says oh let everything that has breath praise the Lord because you can't even breathe on your own you couldn't stand up on your own you can't lift up your hands on your own you couldn't make your heart beat on your own we're not that good we're not made out of gold or marble we weren't made out of rock or stone we were made out of dirt so that we could be dependable on this God who is awesome and mighty and full of glory and so our own very own being says we need him. And we can't exist by ourselves. Are you following me? 
This is why we have to be careful with independence. And I don't know about you, but I've tried to be independent. And independent will lead down a difficult road. My young daughter, Aria, is a year old, and she's already trying to be Miss Independent. She hasn't even heard Destiny's Child, and she's already trying to be Miss Independent. It's like, no, you are not going there. You are not touching that. You are not doing that. But there's something in the dirt that wants independence. There's something in the dust of the ground that wants to be independent. In fact, Adam tried to be independent. We go back to Genesis and we see that after God formed Adam, Adam thought he was good all by himself and he could make his own decisions and his own choices and it led to the fall of man. In the book of Genesis, we have the fall of man where now sin has entered the world. Sin entered the cosmos. Literally, the Bible says it entered the universe. From the macro level to the micro level, sin has infected all of creation. That's why you and I, we are now born in sin. Because of Adam and Eve's choice, you and I today are born with a tendency, a proclivity to want to be independent from God. And what we have to learn, and I'll put it this way today, is that independence brings death. Try to be independent from God. Try to get away from his word. Try to get away from his will. Try to get away from his path. Do all you want. Do whatever you want, however you want, with whatever and whoever you want. And you will see it leads to a dark road. And some of us in this room, if we could be honest today, we've been there or we are there today. It's the start of a brand new year. It's the first Sunday of 2024, but it doesn't feel like it deep down in our soul. Because we've chosen independence. We've made choices based out of our own wisdom and our own will. And it always leads to destruction. Always. And all we have to do is look back and learn from our original mother and father and learn that independence brings death. Adam and Eve were kicked out of Eden. The relationship with God is broken. And we are broken now. Born broken. This is why we must be born Again, because our first birth now comes with sin. We are sinful creatures. There's sin in the dirt. Sin entered the dust of the ground. Are you following me? Sin entered the dust, the dirt of the ground. And now it has infected each and every single one of us. And today, some of us know because our life feels like dirt. There's no joy at the beginning of a brand new year because the dirt has confused our mind, our soul. It's darkened our understanding. Glory days, I hear glory days, and some of us are like, it doesn't feel like glory days, it feels like dirt days. It feels like there's nothing but dirt on my life, on my marriage, on my relationship. Dirt is not a clean material. You, you ever seen a dog roll around in dirt? And then they try to go inside your house and jump on your furniture? I'll shoot my dog. <laughs> Some of us, it feels like we've been rolled around dirt. Our life, our mind, our soul has been rolled around dirt. I'm trying to start a new year focused on God. I'm trying to start a new year listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, but it feels like dirt is clouding my vision. It feels like I'm under some dirt. It's not glory days, it's dirt days. If independence brings death, then dependence brings life. If being independent from God and choosing our own will, our own ways, brings death, then a very simple and obvious statement is that dependence on God brings life. In other words, at the start of 2024, let's not choose independence, Let's choose dependence. Because if this dirt that's full of sin can depend on God, the maker of the dirt, the one who formed the dirt, then surely he can save us from sin, cleanse us from sin, and he can bring life to the dirt 
again. This is why we praise him. This is why we love him. This is why we worship him because my end is not going back to the dirt, but I live forever because he's given this dirt life and life eternally. Come on, anybody thankful? And so I'm not choosing independence. I'm choosing dependence and togetherness with God. And when we do that, I'm telling you, we'll see glory in our lives. So I put it this way today. In order to surge, you need to surrender. 2024, come on, it's the start of a brand new year. We got 12 months ahead of us. We, we got a whole, we got a blank page. I want to surge in my relationship with God. I want to thrive in my relationships with people. I want my marriage, my household. I want my health, my mind, my soul, my body to do well. If you want to do well, don't choose independence. The more you surrender to God, the more you'll surge in what he has for you. Come on, at the start of 2024, why don't you make a decision today, right now, wherever you're at, wherever you're watching, I'm not going to be an independent person. I'm going to be dependent on God the way my body depends on him for the very next breath. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on, come on. Let's be here the next three Wednesdays. Let's gather. Get, get the next 21 days and fast and pray with us. Join us on social media for prayer. Come on, let's go after God because when we surrender to his will, his word, and his ways, I'm telling you, you will thrive. You will surge. It is an overflow of glory that will happen. Some of us complain because we don't see God's glory in our lives and because we don't surrender to his will. You can't have glory if all you want is your will, not his will. In Genesis chapter 2, we see God as creator. Somebody say creator. God is an artist. God is a designer. God is a creator. And in Genesis chapter 2, he forms man out of the dust, the dirt of the ground. And what did we just read? He formed man and then what did he do? He breathed life into the man, <laughs> into the dirt. Some of you woke up with that. <laughs> he breathed life into him. As soon as he did that, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when God does that, the Bible says, and he became a living soul. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, is the start of mankind. That is when we became alive. Now there's a problem because that's the first race of humanity. And since Adam fell, the first race of humanity ends in death. Death entered the human body and so a second Adam must come. And there must be a second now birth that leads to life. Are you following me? Jesus, before he ascends, in John chapter 20, verse 22, he gathers his disciples. And in John chapter 20, verse 22, it says, then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Wait a, wait a minute. What, what God the Father does in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, we see the Son now do in John chapter 20, verse 22. Jesus gathers his friends, his followers, his disciples, and right before he ascends, he breathes on them to receive the Holy Spirit. Why did Jesus do this? Because it was the mark of regeneration, new birth. Jesus is signifying and symbolizing that now all of us who put our faith and trust in him, we are now a new creation. We are no longer part of the old creation. There's no longer sin in the dirt. Now there's glory in the dirt. Because in Acts chapter 2, the promise that the prophet Joel spoke about came to pass. When they were all gathered in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came. And there was a wind in the room. And it filled all of them that were in the room. All of us, when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you may not feel the breath, you may not feel the wind, but something happens on the inside. Something happens in the spirit being. And your spirit, it was dead, comes alive. It was dark, that comes to light. It was darkened by the, by the ways of this world. But now you've come alive in Christ. There's a new wind. And now we are alive. The second Adam has brought a new race, a new creation. And now in the dirt, there's the glory of God. God has picked the most humble, fragile substance. 
He didn't make me from gold or marble. He didn't make me from aluminum or iron. I thought I was, but he made me from the dirt of the ground. And out of that dirt, he filled it with his glory. Ooh, that's beautiful. Because the power doesn't go to me, it goes to him. Anything good that happens in your life, all the blessings that God allows, the glory doesn't go to you, it goes to him. Because all we are is dirt. That he said, I'll fill that dirt with my power. I'll fill that dirt with my anointing. I'll fill that dirt with my grace. I'll fill that dirt with my goodness. I'll fill that dirt with my, oh, come on, with all of God's goodness, all of his holiness, all of his power, all that he has in him. He breathed and now fills us. And today I am no longer walking just in sin, in this dirt, but I'm walking in the glory of God. Peter mentions this. Are you following along? Peter mentioned this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Peter says, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. In other words, you are not just dirt, you are walking glory. You're not just a piece of dirt. This is why we're having trouble in our schools today and this is why people are losing their minds and this is why people end their life and end other people's life because you have no idea how valuable you are and I want to tell you today you are not an animal you are not ashes you are not an accident you're more than dirt you got glory on the inside you were made in his image he's put his glory on the inside of you and he wants to form you and shape you and he wants to give you worth and value you're not here just to take up space you are God's design there's the fingerprints of God all over you he made you to walk like him and talk like him and think like him you are God's idea he made you he formed you the Bible says in the dark place he formed you he knitted you together God knows who you are and today it doesn't matter what your life may look like he wants to fill it with his glory the body is going to come and go but inside you that fr that that frame is holding the glory of God on the inside that's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell in other words Oh, you can hurt my body, but you can never hurt my spirit. Oh, come on, somebody, 2024, I don't know what will happen to our bodies, but I know that God has deposited something on the inside that no matter what may happen on the outside, I got glory on the inside. I got God on the inside. I got his spirit on the inside. I'm walking with God. I'm talking with God. I'm thinking with God. Come on, somebody. You can trap my body, but you can't trap my spirit. My season may not look too good, but on the inside, it won't determine the spirit that I'm going to have. I may go through dark times, but on the inside, my spirit, spirit will praise. My spirit will worship. My spirit will walk. 2024, make a decision. I'm walking in glory days. Come on. The joke now, especially all over social media, is at the beginning of every year, here we go. Oh, praise God. It's a new year. Blah, 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 blah. That's the joke now, right? Everybody's like, ah, here we go. We're going we're gonna to go to all the churches and everybody's going to be a new year, new you. And people begin to mock the possibilities of what God can do. Yeah, I get amped with, with a new year. The psalmist says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. If you have no idea what day or time it is, you're in trouble. You're a fool, basically, is what the Bible says. But if you say, I, got, I don't know how many days I got left, but I'm counting my days. And this new day, this new year, every new day should represent a new opportunity of what God can do. So you and I, we have a spirit on the inside. And once we become followers of Jesus Christ, the glory of God, the Holy Spirit rests on the inside. Are you following me? Now a process begins called sanctification. Somebody say sanctification. Can you say it like you at least had a croqueta? Come on. Somebody say sanctification. The Bible says that when we become believers in Jesus, we are justified. What happens at salvation? Justification. 
meaning there was sin in the dirt. But the minute we believed in Jesus, the second we put our faith and trust in him, we are made just. Simple way to remember it is just as if we've never sinned. That's how good God is. After justification comes sanctification. I had like seven verses to share with you, but because of time, I'm going to cut it down. But sanctification is all over the New Testament. It's all over Scripture. In fact, you can find it in the Old Testament. But it's the process that God is making you holy. God wants holiness out of your life and my life. If you want a church to clap and all the dumb things you do, if you want a church to pat you on the back for all of your mistakes, you may have to try to find another church because here we're going to talk about holiness. And we're not talking about it from a judgmental stand. No, we all need to be holy. We all are being made holy. And so we're going to preach holiness. We're going to preach sanctification because it's what this world needs. And I know the culture now is everybody do whatever you want. Wide is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life. No. God is now, after you become justified, he takes you now to be sanctified. And there's a process called sanctification. This is what we're talking about for the next few weeks, glory days. Glory days doesn't mean more power, more screaming, more jumping. Glory days be means becoming more like Jesus. Alex, what is glory days all about? Glory days, does that mean I'm gonna be rich this year? Does that mean I'm finally no longer going to be single and desperate and thirsty? <laughs> Does that mean we're going to see his power and glory and everybody laid out? No, glory days mean you become more like Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, for by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. All of us in the room, online, wherever you're watching, if you've made a decision to follow Jesus, you are now being sanctified. I'm running out of time, but I want to focus on this verse. This is the verse that's going to carry us for the next few weeks. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Write it down. Memorize it. It's a few verses that have to do with glory days. This is one of them that I really want to focus on. Paul is talking about the former glory, the old glory that was in the Old Testament. And he says, in Jesus, we now have a new glory. And look what he says in verse 18. He says, and now we are with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord. We are being transformed. In the Greek there is where we get our word metamorphosis. You and I are being changed daily into the same image of what? Of Jesus from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. One translation says, from glory to glory. <laughs> in fact, the connotation in the original text is from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. It's an infinite amount. In other words, God's will and desire for your life and my life is that we will move onward and upward every single day living with Jesus. That we wouldn't stay in the ground or the dirt, but that every single day we would be transformed. We will be renewed. We would go through metamorphosis. I'm becoming somebody else today. And tomorrow I'm gonna be better. And the day after that, you're gonna see a brand new Alex. Meet me at the end of the year. You're going to see a transformed Alex. Not that I got it all together, but I'm going from glory to glory to glory. My best days are not behind me. My best days are ahead of me because the Spirit of God God is changing me. The Spirit of God is evolving me. He is making me more like the Son in my character, in the way I think, in the way I speak, in the way I treat, in the way I love. What the world wants to see is a church that has gone from glory to glory to glory. Not in our exterior work, but in our, inter in our character. The world is not looking for more churches that is full of lights and screens and people jumping around, that's great. I'm all for that, I believe in that. I will dance in one leg, I'll spin around, I'll do all that, I'm for that. I'm charismatic with a seatbelt. 
What the world is looking for is Jesus, people. And so Paul says, as we look to him, in fact, this was one of the main themes in Paul's life. You think Paul had a good life? Paul went through the trenches. Paul, he, he got all kind of hell thrown his way, but he always says, looking, looking to him, fixing your eyes on him. And he says, as we behold, we'll get more into this verse as we go in this series. But he says, as we behold him, we are changed to look like him. From glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. So 2024, I don't know what your life is going to look like. I don't know what kind of news you're going to get. I don't know what kind of texts you'll receive. I don't know what the middle of the year will look like. I don't know where we'll be in December of this year. But I know one thing and one thing for sure. I'm going to be at a greater level of glory looking like the sun because I'm looking at the sun. Through it all, stay looking to Jesus and you'll be transformed because there's glory in the dirt. I'll finish with this, and this is another verse that's going to take us throughout the whole week. And the band can come up. Isaiah chapter 60. These two verses are the ones that literally like made my heart jump. In my old church, we used to say, made my baby jump. That's just weird, charismatic talk, but that just means excited. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3, and then Isaiah 60. And I don't know who this is for, but this is for somebody. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But the Lord, come on, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you the prophet Isaiah 700 years before Jesus is talking to the city of Jerusalem and the people of God because they are facing destruction of their homeland destruction of their city and if you read the prior chapters before this it is death and destruction are you following me it is darkness but Isaiah has a prophetic vision of what's to come and the one who's to come his name is Jesus. 700 years before Isaiah, he gets a vision from God that a Messiah is coming and he says, oh Jerusalem, don't you give up, don't you quit, don't you stay in darkness, arise because the glory of the Lord is coming upon your life. Now that doesn't, I believe, just go to the city specifically, but that goes to the people of God as well. Because Jesus has come, now you and I, we can arise as well. You and I, we can stand up as well. And I'll finish with these three last things. And I know I said, I keep, I keep saying, I'll finish, I'll finish. I'm finishing with these last three things. Number one, because of what Jesus has done, today you can stand. Today you and I can stand. Somebody shout stand. stand. Oh, come on, one more time. Somebody shout stand. stand. It is time to stand. It is literally time to stand. It is not time to stay down and out. It is not time to throw in the towel and give up. Arise, arise. That word in the Hebrew is kumi. It literally means stand up and be healed. That's literally what it means. When Jesus was in the pool of Bethesda, in John chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus said to him, get up, take your bed, and walk. Rise and get up and walk. Today, I really believe that the Spirit of God is telling some of us, get up now. Stand up now. Don't stay down. You are not a loser. You're not going to quit. You're not going to throw in the towel. The glory of the Lord is upon you. Stand up. Come on and be restored. Stand up and be healed. Stand up and worship. Stand up and give Him some praise. Stand up and walk in your restoration. Stand up and walk in the promise of God. Come on, it's glory days for my life. Stand up. Arise. You need to make a decision. 2024, I'm going to stand. Paul says, and having done everything, stand. 
The prophet Isaiah says, arise, stand up today. I don't know what's got you under the dirt, but it's time to stand. The maker of the dirt is greater than the dirt that's trying to cover you. Stand and be healed. That's literally what that word arise means. Then it says shine. Shine. It's, it's your year to walk in all that God has for you. Don't let another year go by. Be transformed. Remember, the more you surrender, the more you'll surge. You want to shine, it comes with sacrifice. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the glory. Sacrifice. Die to your ego. Shine is always like, you know, we always talk about shine. Like, go out there and be your best you and shine with all your talents and all your giftings and all. And I'm for that, but it starts with death. You want to shine? The real light is Jesus. So there's some ego that needs to go into the ground so that Jesus can be high and lifted up. Look what Jesus says, John chapter 17, verse 22. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them. That they may be one, even as we are one. Jesus is praying and he says, God, the glory you've given me, I now have given to them. There's glory in you. There's glory in you for you to walk in all that God has for you. It's the year of glory in Jesus' name. Stand, shine, and we'll finish with the word that I've used all day long, surge. What that means is be transformed, overflow, grow, change, mature, surge. The Christian life is onward and upward, from glory to glory to glory to glory. Isaiah says, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The picture of Isaiah 60 is the picture of a sunrise. And the sun is shining over the city. Today, can I tell you, you don't have to look east. You got to look up. The sun is risen and it's coming upon you so that you can surge in all that God has for you. This is the year I'm going to stand. I'm going to shine. I'm going to surge because greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. I want us to stand up all over this place. If you're here and you say, Alex, I don't know Jesus. In fact, I'm far away from God. Maybe you're in here and you're saying, I need glory on the inside. I need the Holy Spirit. Maybe you feel like you're living separated from God because of some of your own choices. And you're saying, I have no idea if God could do anything with my life. You don't know where I've been, what I've done. I don't. All I know is that I'm dirt just like you. But if God could grab some of our dirt in here, cleanse it and fill it with glory, I'm telling you, he could do it with your life. The Bible says that sin separates us from God. Sin brings death like we talked about. Independence brings death. You may be separated from God right now and it's killing you slowly. It's killing your mind, your emotions, your spirit. It's perhaps killed relationships, families, marriages. But if you keep reading that verse, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says that Jesus, he came down to the world. The eternal became finite and he carried the sins of the world on his shoulders. Jesus, he carried my sins, your sins. He went up on a cross and there on that cross, Jesus died for each and every single one of us so that death no longer destroys you, but now you have eternal life forever in Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus died on that cross. He went down to a grave and after three days, he resurrected We. We remembered that earlier today as we took communion. His body was broken so that today you can be made whole. His blood was spilled so that today you can be cleansed. Come on, with every eye closed, every head bowed. Come on, I want Calvary praying. I want Dream Team praying, pastors praying. Today, January 7th, 2024, as we start a brand new year. If you're here, if you're watching online, and you say, Alex, I need a new beginning. I want to become a new creation. I want him to breathe on me. Oh, there's been sin in the dirt, but I want glory in the dirt now. I want to be a child of God. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. What a beautiful way to start the year. Every eye closed, every head bowed as we're praying. I'm going to count to three in just a moment. If that's you, if you're saying, Alex, I need Jesus. I need forgiveness. 
Today, I want Jesus to forgive me of all of my sins. And today, I'm going to start brand new. If you want peace, you want joy, you want hope, I'm telling you, you can only find it in Jesus. With every eye closed, every head bowed, in a moment of prayer, in a moment of privacy, I'm going to count to three. If that's you, would you raise your hand high enough, long enough for me to see you? I want to see who I'm praying for. Hold it up as high as you can when I count to three. I'll see you, then you can put it right back down. If you're saying, Alex, pray for me. I want, want Jesus to become my Savior. I want forgiveness. I want to repent. I want to turn to Him. At the count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand as high as you can, as high as you can. Hands all over the auditorium. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you. Awesome, awesome. God bless you, God bless you. Amazing. If you're watching online, come on, you raise your hand right there where you're at. The Spirit of the Lord sees you. All your hands can go down now. I'm going to say a simple prayer. If you raise your hand, I want you to repeat this prayer with me from the bottom of your heart. In fact, the entire church. Come on, let's say it as one big family together. Repeat after me. Say, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity. Today, I admit that I'm a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God that you died for my sins, and on the third day, you resurrected. Come on, say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. From today on, come on, from today on, I am saved, I'm healed, and I'm forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Oh, come on, Calvary, come on, can we put our hands together? Come on, there's a party in heaven. We love you. We love you. Hey, if you made that decision today, if you raise your hand, whether here or online, we want to send you a gift. We want to give you a gift here today. On the way out, there's a tent out there. It's called our Connect Tent. And all around the turf area, you're going to see a lot of our Dream Team members holding up this bag. And it's full of a lot of gifts for you. The most important gift in there is the Bible. Before you leave, before you go see the Dolphins win tonight, all of that. Come on, why don't you pick up a bag on the way out? We just love you. We may ask for a phone number, an email. Me and Dana would love to send you a letter, help you out with some resources to start the year. If you don't want to give your number or email, that's fine. We'll still give it to you, but we love you. You got a family here that loves you. Come on, we're on the journey together. Come on, why don't we put our hands together one more time? Hey, why don't we sing this song out one more time? Come on, with every hand lifted, Father, we thank you. We praise you. God, we thank you. We pray that your glory may shine upon us, that your favor will go before us, behind us, and surround us all the days of our life. We're walking in glory days, from glory to glory to glory to glory. In Jesus' name, amen.